Welcome to Edutech 2021. My name's Amanda Frampton and I am a learning delivery specialist for Microsoft Education. I'm based in Queensland and today I'm here to talk to you about Microsoft Teams. Go team, your hybrid classroom made easy. So basically Teams has been around for a little while um, and it has definitely proved its existence um, as a result of COVID, but we're moving into a new phase of using Teams in a hybrid learning environment. What is hybrid learning? I'm about to tell you a little bit about that. Um, but before we start, um, just in case you wanted to reach out in regards to anything I cover in this presentation, or you'd like some help um, in your school or in your classroom in integrating any of the Microsoft products, my Twitter handle is there, at amframp. Uh, please follow or contact me uh, via DM, or you can contact me through the EduTech platform as well. I just wanted to start basically with this infographic that we have established in regards to hybrid learning because we hear this term hybrid learning and it's kind of like, well, what does that mean? I think with COVID, everyone went into online learning and we all know what online learning is to some extent. But basically, when everybody came back to school in a face-to-face -face environment, we had realized the potential of what technology and online learning could offer and didn't really want to let all of that go. And that's where this term hybrid learning um, came about because it was about taking the best of what we were doing in the online learning environment where we were giving our students a voice and offering them on-demand content amongst other things and taking what, the best of what we do face-to-face -face and combining those to create a really great learning environment for our students. So um, we came up with the term hybrid learning through a number of research white papers that were done in conjunction with global education leaders and one of them spoke about you know this pandemic being the perfect time to reimagine what education looks like and so today I'm going to take you through a bit of a presentation on what is possible with Microsoft Teams um, a lot of people have been using it uh, and maybe They've just been using it for a bit of channel chat, a few announcements to store some files and maybe um, set some assignments. But when you integrate Teams with Microsoft uh, 365 or Office 365 and a lot of our third party apps, the possibilities are endless. Okay, so I'm gonna sort of go through this hybrid learning map and talk about each of the pillars in hybrid learning and, and show you how um, a teacher has set up learning um, within each of these pillars to empower her student Molly. So I'm gonna take a different tact on this presentation today and give you a day in the life of Molly Dempsey, a year seven student using Microsoft Teams and Office apps and some other third party apps as well on her one-to-one -one device in in the classroom at her school so first of all let's have a look at this infographic hybrid learning broken up into five pillars okay the first one there being the magnifying glass which is one spot for everything really really important because we can lose so much instructional time to students navigating and finding resources that we want to give them an easy platform to navigate that they can chat through that they can communicate through that they can collaborate through and that they can access resources through so microsoft teams provides a really good opportunity um, to deliver that for your students the second one there is more ways to inspire. So your curriculum, your way. You can integrate different Office 365 apps in there. You can incorporate some of our other third party apps to give students a different opportunity. But the thing is, when you see um, Molly's day, it can all be kind of integrated nicely into Teams. So she's not going off and signing into a million different platforms to do all this cool creative stuff. So I'll show you a little bit about how her teacher has set up team her teachers have used teams and set up teams um, to be able to inspire molly's learning as well the third one there is feel like you're together even when you're not so building an engaged learning community giving students a voice through an online platform making them feel like they're part of this team that they can um, or this space that they can you know um, rely on to give them the answers to their questions to rely on to contact others or you know as a as a valuable study tool um, a lot of opportunities there for teams to um, promote a community within a school or, or a classroom environment as well 
Obviously, expanding everybody's potential or every student's uh, potential is really important. And Molly has some learning difficulties. So I'm going to show you how she accesses some of our inclusive classroom tools to help her along with one of her assignments um, to get some ideas down onto paper and to use the immersive reader to actually um, help her improve her writing as well. Uh, and the last pillar there is actually support and understanding students. So stay on top of students' progress as a teacher um, using real-time analytics that the Insights app offers. And I'm going to show you a brand new feature of Teams that's going to be available in August called Reading Progress that's going to allow you to really track the progress of your students' uh, reading practice um, as you, if you decide to use it with your class. So let's get started. We'll start with one spot for everyone and I'll show you a little bit about how Molly's form teacher has used Teams to create a one-stop shop uh, for everything that the, the class needs to know um, for um, their first period of the day. So Molly has uh, started class, the bell's just gone. She's come into her form room and her teachers said, okay, can we all open up our devices and uh, jump into the general channel of our form class team, please? And when Molly uh, jumps into the channel of the form class team, First of all, she sees that she's got all of the announcements here for the day and her teacher takes the class through those to make sure that all the students have seen anything important that they need to know. So not only is Teams a place for teaching and learning, but for all of those um, administration kind of um, things that we have to do with students as well. You can see here for Molly as well, that she's gonna stay really organized throughout the day because all of her class teams are set up by her teachers and she can see them in her team's left rail here. So at any stage, if she's got the, test, the desktop app of Teams open throughout the day, she can just open up the corresponding team as she uh, moves from class to class. So again, just keeping her organized, allowing her to um, make sure she's on top of her learning without having to fumble and try and find resources from everywhere. Another thing that Molly's teacher does is actually use this little like function on the posts. Um, and she requires her students to actually like the announcement post so that the she gets an overview of who, is, who has actually been into that channel today and who has liked that post so that she knows they're all aware of that uh, important communications that she's rolled out. Now it is Tuesday morning and the teacher has noticed that um, the class is a bit flat today, so um, she has decided that she's going to check in with her students and she's going to use a um, feature of Teams that's relatively new called the Reflect app. And I'll show you where to access that as a teacher in a moment. But um, she just talks to her class about, hey, I'm just gonna do a quick mood check-in, pop into our wellbeing channel, and you'll see that I have rolled out a mood, how are you feeling poll to you. So that's what Molly sees from a student point of view, and she has the opportunity to select which emotion, or which emoji she um, sort of relates to the most at the moment. Um, and the teacher's kind of preempting that the class is flat uh, because it is week eight and there's a fair bit of assignments uh, assessment going on. So she's just gonna use this as a, a check-in point to make sure everyone's doing okay. Um, so at the back end, the teacher, would actually see a whole heap of data roll in for her and she would be able to see you know which uh, emotion each of the students has actually um, uh, allocated for that particular morning and she can see at a glance that sort of 30 percent are feeling on the glum um, stage so she kind of takes the opportunity um, to have a chat to her class now the Reflect app is a lot more involved than that. That's just a really simple overview um, of how you can use it, but you can dive down into each of these little emojis and they each have about five or six different emotions um, uh, attached to them. And it's a great uh, tool to use in conjunction with your social and emotional learning uh, curriculum uh, to get the students to be able to talk about their emotions and recognize their emotional state and, and then um, identify some strategies on how to, um, you know, overcome any um, uh, unwanted emotions that they may be dealing with. 
So uh, the teacher goes ahead then and says, okay, the class is feeling a little flat. I'm kind of preempting that that might be because um, it's week eight and you've got heaps of assignments due at the moment. So she sort of says to the class, did you wanna just double check your calendars and make sure that you're on top of all of your assessment and you know when it's due? And this is a new feature of Microsoft Teams as well, where you can actually set an assignment and make it show in the student's calendar. So that means this little calendar icon down the left-hand side of the uh, Teams rail becomes more than just a place for meetings, but a tool for self-regulation for the students as well. So as the teacher walks around the class and the students have got their calendar views open, she notices that there's a fair bit of assignment, a fair bit of assessment due this week, one each day. So she kind of understands why the students may be feeling a little low. Just to quickly show you, if you are a teacher and you'd like to use this function, when you're in and you're setting an assignment, just right down the bottom in settings here, you'll now see this uh, option that says add assignment to calendars and you can put it in the students only, the students and me, or the students and the team owners as well. So if you've got, you know, pastoral care and form class, etc., as members of all your class teams, then they can get visibility about what's actually happening across um, that entire cohort in terms of assessment. So that's pretty nifty. So, now the teacher has sort of said, okay, um, remember all of our strategies that we've got in terms of managing our time and making sure that we're practicing self-care and the teacher then points them towards their static uh, SharePoint class page that she's created for them to house some of those resources that she will use from year to year and she doesn't want to always have to recycle them from team to team because teams are designed as a class long entity um, and uh, some schools and teachers are deciding to have sort of like a SharePoint site that um, exists uh, or coexists with a team so that um, that SharePoint site can sort of remain from year to year and you can just continue pointing cohorts towards that. Um, and, you know, uh, generic resources like self-care and stress management and well-being could all live in here. And you can see here that um, Molly's teacher has got a reference materials and a student help center. So she would direct her students to these areas to access some of those materials on well-being if they needed it. The great thing is that these templates are actually available from the SharePoint lookbook site as well. And you can actually download a template straight into your class team and just do a couple of alterations and put in your content and you're ready to roll. So um, SharePoint used to be a little bit overwhelming, but the new experience is super easy to use and um, really customizable as well. So we're seeing SharePoint be used as school intranet sites, etc., as well, which would help with that uh, constant kind of uh, pool of resources that have to exist from year to year to year. So we'll move on through Molly's day um, and we'll have a look at how her teacher is using uh, some other tools to keep her engaged and to uh, inspire her. So there's a whole heap of different um, examples in this slide, but I'm going to go ahead and show you um, how Molly's digital technologies teacher is using a third party app called Wakelet to present some uh, choice to her students. Um, in terms of some of the tutorials they can do uh, to practice and develop their coding skills for their piece of assessment. So you can see here that Molly's entered period two, she's now in digital technologies. She's popped into her digital technologies team and in her coding channel here, she can see that the teacher has plugged in a Wakelet for her. Now, if you haven't heard of Wakelet, it's one of our uh, third party apps. We have a relationship with Wakelet so that it's Office 365 sign-on and it's free to use. 
And the easiest way that I would describe it is it's the Pinterest of the education world. So you can see from my screenshot here that you can present resources to students in this really nice, visually appealing way. Um, and they can actually just click on those and it will take them out to the full resource. So um, the teachers popped in a collection of uh, tutorials that the students can do here in order to practice their coding skills. Now, um, the lesson sequence or the, the aim of uh, digital technologies for the next couple of weeks is to actually code um, the micro bit to create a um, pendulum, a glow pendulum, and um, they will need to practice their coding skills to be able to do that. Uh, so this is an opportunity and um, she's also plugged in a micro bit site here uh, where the students can do project practice. It comes to the time where the teachers are ready to set the assignment. They've gone through some basic skills. They've done some practice in their coding. And now Molly is opening up. It's been a very productive period too, right? So she's already done her practice and the teacher's setting the assignment now. Um, but here in the assignment, this is a really interesting part is that um, Microsoft Teams assignments are very multimodal, probably more multi multimodal than you actually thought, because um, you can actually allocate a make code coding space in a Teams assignment so that students through Teams go into Teams, they open up their project space, they do their coding there and they submit that coding space to you. So as a teacher, you can test that coding um, and uh, have access to it. It's always been an issue in terms of how students will actually submit code. So this is a, a really great alternative to be able to do that. The great thing is as well, as a student workflow, Molly can go through this assignment and click on this space. It will save all her work for her. It's all through Teams. Notice we haven't left Teams yet, okay? And if she doesn't finish this to hand in today, she can just close that assignment down and go through that assignment next time to continue her coding. And then when she's ready, she can turn that assignment in. So um, it's a great student workflow in terms of keeping um, that code project um, safe and not having to download it on shared devices, etc. So um, a really cool thing that if you didn't know about Microsoft Make Code, it's Microsoft's block coding um, language and it works beautifully on the micro bit. And when you go to micro bit make code, you can use these project spaces and you don't even really need the physical micro bit because you can see here that we have a simulator. So the student can be coding, coding, coding here, test, uh, revise, code, 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 test, revise in this environment as well. And when they're ready to go, they can, if they want to, download this code and put it onto the micro bit, but they can submit this code to their teacher as well. Now, because the students were making a glowing pendulum and um, the teacher wanted to, them to make a video to show that um, it would actually work because you do need to shake it, um, the teacher asked them to make a video on their device and actually upload that to their assignment as well. So you can see here that in a Teams assignment, a little bit different to just submitting a Word document because you've done a word processed essay, we have got a coding space and a video um, and Teams is gonna handle those file sizes just beautifully. So what the teacher will actually see when Molly has turned in her assignment and she is grading this is um, the speed grader down the side here. So she can flick through all of the students in her class and for each student that she flicks through, she will see the coding panel and the code that they have submitted and their video that they have uploaded and she would be able to play that and watch it to prove that their code works. And then she also has an opportunity to provide some feedback for her students as well. You can actually add rubrics to Teams as well. So the teacher could have had a rubric in here that she was grading Molly um, on and Molly would receive um, that back when the teacher returned the assignment here as well. So a really, really neat way of managing student um, assignments and work uh, is to use the, that Microsoft Teams assignments feature um, within there. Now, if you are uh, looking for a plagiarism checker as well, which I know is very important, important, um, turn it in 
is actually uh, if you have a subscription in your school already, you can actually integrate that into Teams and have everything plagiarism checked through Teams assignments, which is great. So if you haven't got that one activated, talk to your IT department. The same with the make code. Um, sometimes it's not on by default. So you might have to um, talk to IT about getting those two features turned on within your Teams interface. Okay, so Molly's had some uh, morning tea. It's now period three and she's moving into her history lesson. And her history teacher is uh, get, taking them through the process of analyzing historical sources. So it's a pretty involved process and um, he's already gone through uh, how to do it in class once, but the students keep asking lots and lots of questions. So basically he decided to make an on-demand video so that the students can watch this over and over again, um, can rewind, you know, pinpoint parts when they get to different parts of their historical source analysis assignment um, and use that uh, on an ongoing basis throughout the unit. So you can see here that um, Molly's history teacher has actually uh, started a stream channel for his students. And the great thing about uh, popping it into a stream channel as opposed to just putting these videos into the um, file library for your students is that streams has uh, analytics so you can see how many students have watched it and um, the students can like it they can comment on it when they open it up in stream and they can also uh, you know obtain a transcript for that and there's accessibility options built in as well um, so it's a really great way to provide that content to your students um, so all the teacher did to get this in here is use this little plus button here to customize the team channel and add it in the stream um, URL uh, in there and it plugs in as this uh, space in the top of the channel there for Molly to access whenever she needs it. We're going to move into building um, community, feeling like we're together when they're not working in groups when they might not be in the same room. And we can do a whole heap of things in Teams to sort of uh, promote that type of activity as well. So one of those is using collaborative office docs and, and that's well and good and we can do that through the file library. But um, Molly's history teacher had just come across Microsoft Whiteboard as a new piece of software, knew that it integrated into Teams and it provided a really great multimodal experience um, in terms of being able to, you know, insert post-it notes, put notes in, um, put pictures in, put documents in, etc., and to be able to work collaboratively in as well. So it's a really open-ended kind of platform. Um, and what he did was in, uh, in the channel uh, for the historical analysis, he set up collaborative whiteboards for a number of the students that were working in groups on this assignment. And as you can see here, um, there is a, a little indication up here as to who's in this board and who's collaborating, which means that um, the students can keep a record, a digital record of the work that they're doing um, collaboratively in this space. Popping in post-it notes, inking, annotating over the, the uh, resource, pointing to different elements, which is what this project is all about in history as well. So if you haven't had a chance to have a play with Microsoft Whiteboard, there's just been a whole heap of updates to it. It's a new experience. It's amazing on the web. You can get it on iOS, you can get it on Mac, you can get it in Teams, you can get it on Windows desktop, um, and it's well worth having a look at in terms of um, even just using it as a normal whiteboard and being able to share that with your students instead of taking photographs of things and having to share that on as well. So in, in terms of creating that community and having the students collaborate and um, work together on this task, um, the history teacher has, has decided to use channel chat for a um, peer feedback activity. So he's asked the students to take a screenshot of their whiteboard when they've finished analyzing the historical source um, and sort of uh, putting down their thoughts on how they did that and pop it into this channel post so that everybody can go and view each other's and then um, provide some feedback and some comments on it. So this is another way that you can 
can use Teams to, you know, um, give students a voice because Megan and Molly worked well in a small group, but Megan's the type of person that probably wouldn't contribute to a whole class discussion when we these were flashing up on the board. But uh, given the opportunity, she's going to sit back and she's going to type a whole heap of constructive criticism in for her peers as well. So this was a really valuable exercise for Molly and Megan and their friends have given them some tips on some things that they've missed in this activity and they can go away and improve um, the process of, of their historical source analysis as well. Um, right, history's done. The next period I think we're going to look at is English and um, Molly, this is where Molly struggles. She really um, uh, has to have the process of writing a draft broken down for her um, because writing is definitely not her strength. Um, she prefers to use the dictate tool because she has some trouble getting her ideas down onto paper. So the teacher has actually set a drafting task for the students um, in the class notebook that's integrated into um, Teams as well. So with every class notebook that you, uh, sorry, with every class team that you set up, you can attach a class notebook to it. And the way that I like to think about it is that Teams becomes kind of like the, the place for um, f big files and um, read only resources and um, channel chat and then OneNote can be kind of like the student's day pad, okay, so that they can do a lot of their drafting and their worksheets, etc., in the OneNote notebook. Um, and the sequential um, way that OneNote sets uh, work out uh, helps reduce cognitive load um, because if you were just putting a whole heap of documents in a um, file library, the students would have to have all of those open everywhere, um, whereas OneNote, they can just flick from one activity to the next, from that one to the one before, etc. So there's definite benefits to using OneNote. If you've come from using OneNote and you're moving into Teams, I think the journey's easier and you'll understand um, the shortcomings of OneNote. It's great, but there's just like a few things that Teams does better in terms of like, um, you know, authored collaboration and things like that in channel chat. Um, but if you are starting with Teams and you haven't used OneNote yet, then you can do a whole heap of stuff in Teams before you even start using OneNote and you can get your head around Teams and then build on your knowledge later down the track with OneNote as well. But in this example here, Molly's actually going to use the dictate tool and it lives in the home toolbar of uh, OneNote and she could expand her real estate here too so she gets OneNote in the whole page. But again, we haven't technically left Teams yet. So uh, it's definitely streamlining uh, all of the technological uh, processes for students in terms of finding curriculum. Um, and uh, she's gone to the page that the teacher has allocated here and she's actually going to then use the dictate tool to speak into her computer and it's going to um, pop that information down onto the page for her. Now, once she's done that, she can use her stylus if she'd like to, to do some editing um, over the top or she can uh, use spell check, etc., to fix her writing up. But one thing that Molly finds really helpful as well, and as an early childhood teacher, I always used to have read out aloud and read to a friend on my writing checklist because you'll often pick up mistakes um, that you have missed when you've proofread it yourself by hearing it read back to you or reading it out aloud. So Molly loves to use the immersive reader function in uh, OneNote and it's available in, uh, in Teams, in the posts and obviously in Word, etc. as well to have this text read back to her so she can use that as a uh, check um, to see how she's gone with her writing. So when she presses Immersive Reader in OneNote, it takes us out to this menu overlay and she gets the ability then to change the background color and some of the settings and to make this content um, visually um, accessible to her um, 
specific needs okay so you can change the background to blue um, so that uh, it will help you read if you are uh, sort of um, suffer from dyslexia as well let's say that molly uh, molly's teacher had asked them to try and use uh, lots of adjectives because they were doing a descriptive piece this little one here um, there's a, a grammar options in there and you can light up the adjectives in that passage of work as well and molly could use that to see how many she's got and if she could add any adverbs before them or add a few more adjectives in as well so um, then we go to Molly's teacher now being able to provide some great feedback for Molly on her uh, essay, okay, using OneNote as well. So a very similar process to marking the team's coding assignment before. Um, this has been set in as assignment and you can actually set the class notebook page um, to the assignment so that the students complete the work in a particular class OneNote page. And that means then that Molly um, can be provided with some audio feedback, because this is a feature of OneNote that you can use, as well as um, some inking and some annotation over her um, assignment. So this stuff here doesn't really help Molly much. It kind of goes in one ear and out the other, but the audio feedback allows her to understand more about what these little marks mean, and that would allow her to go back and to um, improve her writing as well. So really using Teams, um, you know, empowering students to use those accessibility features themselves to help in the process of writing or reading um, or whatever work they're doing, but also the teacher having the ability to provide really good um, specific personalized feedback for students to ensure that they have um, some ammunition there in terms of how they can improve as well. Obviously, you can use the feedback feature in the Teams assignment, and this one actually has a rubric attached, and it's been um, allocated some points. So you can see here that Ali, um, Molly's been allocated 83.33 out of 100, and you can export those grades and equate that to a um, ABC grade if you wanted to. So again, really great for keeping on top of um, student grades. Now, um, Molly's teacher just wants to keep uh, on top of Molly's reading too, because she's not the greatest reader. So that's not Molly. She's a bit young for grade seven, but this feature is coming soon and it's called Reading Progress. So what it allows a teacher to do is through a team's assignment is to allocate a passage of work, um, a passage of text, either in a Word document or a PDF for the student to read. They can uh, record, themselves reading both using video and audio. And what it is going to do is actually um, use artificial intelligence to um, work out that student's words per minute rate, their accuracy rate, and then their mispronunciations, their omissions, their self-corrections, their insertions, and their repetitions. So <clears throat> you can manually override all of this as well if you'd like to, but an excellent diagnostic tool um, for a teacher to be able to sort of work out how they can further support students in terms of improving their reading progress. So if you have been a primary school teacher and you've ever done running records, this is probably going to, or probe records at higher levels, get you so excited because it automates a process that could take you maybe 20 to an hour, 20 minutes to an hour with every single student in your class. And as a result of the time that it takes, you don't get to do it as often as you like. So reading progress is fantastic for primary, but also for keeping um, those students in upper levels on track in terms of practicing uh, their reading task. And it's a little bit like gamifying reading, I find, because kids will prefer to read to a computer than do a home reader that's sent home in their bag with them. So really, really excited to show you that today. It is coming in August, which is the US back to school, um, um, back to the new school year. Um, but August is just August for us. So watch out for that one um, popping up in your tenant, which is really, really exciting. The other cool thing about um, 
the reading progress tool it sort of takes us into this last pillar of hybrid learning in terms of keeping abreast of the data um, that uh, and the and the progress of your students as well so reading progress will actually provide you with class insights into the average accuracy rate for your students over the months you can um, drill down into a student by student basis as well but it gives you a whole heap of data and it also um, does a vocab list for you. So it compiles a vocab list of all the words that your students are struggling with. So lots of lots of teachable moments can come out of this data um, that the reading progress uh, provides for you as well, which is uh, very exciting. So moving into our last pillar of hybrid learning here, supporting and understanding students. I've kind of already given you a quick look at some of the insights that um, reading progress will provide for you. But the other thing that you can also do is plug basic pre-knowledge uh, quizzes into your teaching and learning uh, using Microsoft Forms. So Microsoft Forms is another one of those apps that's available in the Office 365 tenant that allows you to make self-marking quizzes. So you can create these pre-knowledge quizzes and it will give you the data straight away. You don't have to mark another thing. Um, and you can set those as assignments uh, through Teams as well, or just plug a link into the top. And this is what the students would see. And you can see that there's been one point allocated for each of these questions. After they submit it, you can get the data and the students can actually see their data as well if you choose to. And then um, you can work out where you're going to start in terms of uh, teaching that unit and if you need to provide any other support to uh, your students. Um, going into a little bit of the, the teacher view as well um, in terms of how the students are performing. Um, you do have a, an app that plugs into Teams called uh, Insights and you can uh, plug that in using this little plus tab up here and searching for Insights. Um, and what it will do is give you access to a dashboard within the teacher view. So students won't see this but you can see that it will give you digital engagement data and what students were inactive. So this comes back a little bit to the end of the day. Um, we're now in teacher view, Molly's finished her classes, but you just wanna get a bit of an idea of how your students are going. So you can see that there's been 47 new communications. If you drill down in that, you'll discover that 25 of those new communications are those likes that you got on the announcements post this morning. So you know that your students have seen and read those announcements, which is great. You can see that you've had a couple of inactive students. You might drill down onto that data and find out who's been an inactive. And then you might use chat to send them a quick message just to make sure they're okay. Ask them why they haven't been at school. Check the um, uh, role to see if their parents have called them in absent, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, just provide them with a little bit of support in terms of um, making sure they're aware of assignments that are due, etc. And you can see that um, a few people have missed assignments. You can see you've got your average grade here and then you've got a whole heap of other time management, workload and grades uh, trends down the bottom there as well. So a really great app to provide you with some data that you can use to make sure everybody's on track into your, in your school. Now, just letting you know that Teams Insights for schools and system leaders so that you can see all of the data across all of the class teams in your school is coming um, in July. So it should be, well, it's here basically, um, and it will be available for, for purchase. So there is a... Um, an extra tier uh, attached to that if you want to access this data, but a free trial will be available until October 2021. So if you'd like more information on that, um, check out some of the links that I provide to you um, and you should be able to find out how to ac um, activate that in your tenant and get access to your free trial. So that brings me to the end of Molly's day and the end of our presentation. Um, you can see that we didn't leave Teams um, for the entirety of the day. Now that could be realistic or unrealistic, but I wanted to create this ideal uh, world where it could be done. Um, but there's a lot of possibilities there, even if students are flitting in and out of that platform to be able to really use Teams well in a hybrid learning environment. 
So if you are after some more information on hybrid learning, you can see that I provided the link there to our hybrid learning um, site and it will give you access to that infographic as well. And you can also see that I have popped in um, the introduction to Microsoft Teams page that exists on our Microsoft Educator community. So if you haven't joined up or accessed our Microsoft Educator community, it's a fantastic uh, site that provides you with a whole heap of online learning courses and resources, um, and you can view those on demand and you can actually uh, gain credit accreditation, accreditation or um, uh, points at least for some of those courses that you do and work your way towards being a Microsoft Innovative Educator um, and possibly a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert in the future. So speaking of uh, credit for your session, if you would like to join the Educator um, Centre, uh, you can do so at education.microsoft.com and once you've joined up you can go into your profile up in the top right hand corner and there should be an option for you to redeem a code if you just pop this code in here then that will give you uh, some points for participating or, or um, watching this session at least so I hope that um, I have opened your eyes to some of the possibilities that Teams presents in terms of hybrid learning and you feel inspired to go and have a go at using maybe just one more of those features in your teaching and learning um, to help, you know, make your students um, feel empowered and you know get the best out of their their learning so uh, thank you so much for listening in today and um, please reach out at amframp amfamp on twitter um, or through the edutech uh, platform if you would like any more information thank you so much